supplicant let's look at number one number one princely offenses and reasons for deadly sicknesses we've just read that in genesis chapter 20 verses 3 to 7 three things we're looking at number one princely sins that cause deadly sicknesses princely sins that cause deadly sicknesses number two personal sins causes of dreadful sicknesses number three private sins creating dreaded suffering let's look at number one number one princely sins that cause deadly sicknesses we've seen abraham we've seen abimelech a king a prince and we've seen what he has done and what he has done although no citizen in his country could challenge him god brought that impotence infertility brought it upon the family look at numbers chapter 12 reading from verse 1 in Numbers chapter 12 verse 1 and Miriam and Aaron remember Aaron was next in position to Moses and Miriam next in position to Aaron in the organization of the commonwealth of the children of Israel and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married for he had married an Ethiopian woman look at verse 9 in verse 9 and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed God is angry at sin God is angry at backbiting God is angry at gossiping God is angry at belittling the leader Moses even though Moses was younger than both of them and were told the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed and then we're told in verse 10 in verse 10 and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous Acts chapter 12 we're reading from verse 20 Acts chapter 12 verse 20 Acts chapter 12 verse 20 and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon but they came with one accord to him and having made blasters the king's chamberlain their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country verse 21 and upon his said day herod a rage in royal apparel sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them verse 22 and the people gave a shout saying it is the voice of a god and not of a man they exalted him and they put him on a divine throne deity is god is not a man and then in verse and immediately the angel of the lord smote him because the angel of the lord smote him because he gave not god the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost number two here personal sins causes of dreadful sicknesses personal sins the sins that people commit personally and they are responsible and because of that sickness or trouble or calamity comes upon them Psalm 107 verse 17 it says in Psalm 107 verse 17 fools 
because of their transgression they were foolish they didn't understand whatsoever a man sows that will reap whatever a woman sows that will reap whatever a young person sows that's what you will reap fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted in verse 18 their soul abhorreth all manner of meat and they draw near to the gates of death John chapter 5 verse 5 in John chapter 5 verse 5 and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years the Lord saw him lie down there and said where well, thou wilt be made whole and then he gave his complaint and the Lord healed him look at verse 14 after he was healed afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole but look at this sin no more lest a worse sin come unto thee that's new testament that Christ told the man you are made whole you are healed but what brought the original sin on you is your sin now live in newness of life let there be a change let there be a transformation sin no more lest a worse thing come on thee number three is private sin private sin creating dreaded suffering private what people do privately and yet it's against the will and the word of god acts chapter 5 from verse 1 in acts chapter 5 reading from verse 1 it's about ananias and sapphira and we're told but a certain man named ananias was sapphira his wife sold a possession and then in verse 2 and kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it two shall be one not in sin not in lying not in backsliding my husband said so I support my husband not in sin not in corruption my wife said so me the husband I must support my wife not in worldliness not in occultism not in doing evil they kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it and they brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet then in verse 3 and but peter said ananias why has satan filled thy heart to lie to the holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land verse 4 whilst it remained was it not in thy in thine own and after it was sold was it not in thy own power why as thou conceived this thing in thine heart look at this thou hast not lied unto men but unto God in the early church and in today's church when you come and you tell a lie to the leadership you are not lying unto man you are lying unto God and God hates lying he hates deception he hates hypocrisy look at verse 5 whilst an Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost 
Well, you may think of the question or the answer to this question. Where has Ananias gone? Part of the church, a member of the early church, he lied to God, thinking it was lying only to man. He lied to the Holy Ghost, thinking it was lying unto man. And he died without a chance to repent. Private sins creating dreaded suffering. And then we're told in verse 7, and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Then in verse 8, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me, whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, yes, for so much. Verse 9. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that she have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and they shall carry thee out. What a shock for her to know that the husband was gone like that without the privilege of coming back home and to put things right. And what a shock that she herself died just like that. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things and the church should be in fear of God that's what Jesus said fear not man which is only able to destroy the body but fear God who is able to destroy the body and cast the soul into hell fear God point number two now in point number two present obedience with restitution before the desired supplication we're coming back to Genesis chapter 20 reading from verse 14 and Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham Hold on. If Abimelech stopped there, men servants, women servants, more than two men servants, more than two women servants, I only two your wife, only one woman, I've given you women servants, I've given you women servants, I've given you even sheep and oxen, and he retained Sarah. He will still die. Those so called good works cannot replace the restitution, the thing that the Lord expects that a man will do. There are people, the Lord tells them, This is what to do. Make your restitution, set things right. They leave that restitution apart, they take money, okay, if it's to keep money. 